Welcome, dear friends. We at the beginning of a new program. Its title would be Evolutionary Dictatorship. Our guest again is Mr. John Mackay, International Director for Creation Research Australia. We seem to be knowing one another for a while. Mr. It's Mackay. good to be back. <laughs> good to see you. Not long ago, if I'm well informed, uh, you've been to St. Andrews University, is it mm -hmm. right? In Scotland. Okay, and um, you had one student asking you why professors present there do not ask you questions. Well, I was actually at the Geological Association, which is a, a special association within the university. Mm -hmm. And yes, one of the students, because he was quite perplexed by the lecturers who were there, geology lecturers, and he said they shook their heads. Obviously, they didn't like what they were hearing because I was there to present the evidence evolution is wrong at a scientific level and creation is right. And he did want to know, well, why didn't the lecturers ask any questions if they disagreed with you? And this is actually a fairly common phenomenon. And basically, the bottom line, well, I guess if you were an evolutionist and you didn't know if the speaker who was a creationist could actually answer your question and you were afraid that he could, then you wouldn't ask it, right? Yeah. It's like David Attenborough and Richard Dawkins mm. refused to debate yeah. people like myself because, well, your reputation depends on you preaching evolution as if it's a fact. Yeah. And you lose the debate, your whole reputation is finished. So I guess they think silence is the better choice at that time and then they defend themselves when I'm not there. Geology has been regarded for quite a long time now as Christianity's fierce enemy. Mm -hmm. Are you a geologist for what? <laughs> yes, I, I graduated in geology, used to lecture in geology. My dad was involved in mining for a while and my mother says ever since I was a little child he used to bang rocks to see what was inside them. In fact, I took up geology because it was easier to smash things than make things. So <laughs> it, uh, it's what I, uh, I, I do best. But um, yes, it certainly is true that the average person perceives the study of rocks and fossils and the age of the planet as an enemy of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised at that because one of my friends who grew up in a very sheltered Christian environment did a geology course at university and at the end of the first year he naively put up his hand and said, Professor, we've been here a whole year but you haven't discussed Noah's flood. And the professor looked at him with disdain and said, if you're going to ask stupid questions like that, take an arts course. Right, so obviously there's a negativity there. And uh, in the first week at my own university, one of the professors said, we're not going to discuss any such catastrophic rubbish as Noah's flood or things like that. And of course, unfortunately for them, not coming from a church background myself, I wanted to know why there was a big sign that said, wet paint, don't touch. Mm -hmm. So I deliberately touched it to see what the evidence was or was not for things like creation and Noah's flood. So there definitely is an official antagonism. But the funny thing is, if you trace it back, you find geology founded by people like Bishop Nicholas Steno. Okay, and Nicholas Steno, you don't have to read too far to find out, was a six-day literal creationist who believed in Noah's flood. So how come it's actually changed? And surprise, surprise, you find the basic change is, as I've referred many times around the world, to the work of one man. His name is Charles Lyell, a practicing uh, or a graduate in law who took up geology and wrote a book, The Principles of Geology, in which he introduced a new principle. We study the past by assuming the present is the best guide. And all the earliest geologists from Nicholas Steno onwards had said, no, God is the guide to the past, and the past will help us understand the future. So they, they are mutually exclusive approaches. One is biblical based on revelation, and the other is present day based on the assumption that what's happening to you is the best guide for looking backwards. And as I like to point out to people, there are many ways to say what Charles Lyell said. The present is the key to the past is one. Whatever uranium is doing, it's always done. Whatever carbon-14 is doing, it's always done. Here's the other way of saying it. Our time in history, when we live, is the most important time of all. Now, 
That almost sounds of arrogance. Here's another way of saying it. Man, meaning us, is the measure of all things. And whatever we see and understand must be the way it's always been. Now, the other way of saying that is, I am God. Okay? So there's where the conflict really arises. So what I try to do is point out to people, either you put your faith in Charles Lyell, who wasn't there, or you put your faith in God, who was. The starting point will be different, so the end point will be different. And what you discover is, rocks don't oppose Christian faith at all. In fact, it was Jesus who said, if people stop praising him, the stones would cry out his praises. Is there anything to be lost by all the scientific world if they would say one day, throw out evolutionism? Of course, they're going to lose a lot of PhDs and a lot of mm -hmm. uselessly invested time. Mm -hmm. Is there anything financial? Uh, would our gas prices rise or our limestone buildings collapse because mm -hmm. there are no billions of years in those little shells that mm -hmm. made them up? Can you just... well? In our next electronic news service, which comes out in a week or two's time, we have a quote from a Nobel Prize winning physicist dated last year, right? His new book has just come out, just mm -hmm. off the presses. Robert Lawn is his name. Mm -hmm. And he basically says evolution has become what he calls an anti theory, mm -hmm. not an explanation, but a, interesting. to explain things mm -hmm. away. And he says it's really becoming counterproductive. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with him. And in reality, any time an explanation becomes counterproductive, you can do away with it without losing anything, except maybe your reputation. Mm -hmm. I had one professor come to one of my lectures, and uh, he was a geologist. I was giving a lecture on geology, but I was looking at the evidence the world was created, it shows in the rocks, and Noah's flood is real. And he stood up at the end of the lecture and said, if what you say, and by this time he's going blue and purple, I'm worried about a heart attack, you know, if, if what you say is true, I've wasted my entire career. And then he turned around and st stormed out of the building. I, I didn't even have time to say, yes, don't you think it's time you made a big profit out of the rest, right? So in reality, yes, you can abandon the entire evolutionary framework without any loss to science at all. In fact, that's how I sort of almost got involved in this business because when I was doing a course on stratigraphy and geology, I decided, I wonder what will happen if I leave all the millions of years out. Will it affect the, the graduates who go out of my course? So I did the course on mining stratigraphy, didn't put evolution in it, didn't put millions of years, and those students are still using the geological methods that work to run their minds and things like that. And the reason is simple. Do you know where mining, stratigraphy and all the study of the structure of the earth actually came from? Do you think it came from evolutionists? This is what I wanted to say. It's, I'm sure it's, it's not coming from there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you see, basically you'll find our art of geological mapping was invented by a person called William Smith, who you can read his biography was a creationist who believed in Noah's flood. And so our whole ability to mine the earth and map the earth um, and put the two together is pre-Charles Darwin and pre-Charles Lyell. So it was invented without any need for evolution and it works really well on a creation basis.